Good afternoon. Many of you here today are a part of communities at international schools, so I'm sure you've heard about 21st century skills. Among them are critical thinking, creativity, communication, collaboration, along with media skills, technology skills, and more. I think these skills are not only important for my children and students in schools by now, but also for myself. If I'm going to survive in a job market 10 years from now with all of you in Generation Z, I've got to work on acquiring and maintaining these skills too. And yet, I think there is a flip side or an ugly side to some of these skills. And today I want to specifically talk about collaboration's ugly side, which is conflict. Conflict is inherent in collaboration. As I would even posit, you're not really collaborating if there's no conflict. During the last school or work project where you had members assigned to your team, did everyone get along? Did anyone have an opinion that differed from yours? Was there an argument about who was going to be the team leader? Of course. In reality, conflict is healthy. It brings us to crossroads where we have to make a choice. Are we going to do this or are we going to do this? Are we going to pick a third option and try both? We all experience conflict within ourselves, within our families, schools, and workplaces, but not all conflicts allow you to hit the reset button, like flunking a college course. There are many ways to deal with conflict, and we've all heard of some of those ways. For example, explosive anger. All of, this someone, all of a sudden, someone blows up, and it's because they've been internalizing these conflicts they experience without any appropriate outlet. You see, anger is a reaction to conflict, when really successfully dealing with that conflict would help alleviate some of that anger. Anger is frustration. It's not getting what you want. Another way we've probably all heard about is passive aggressiveness, as a way to subvert authority that misuses power. It's a sneaky type of anger that causes more conflict to provoke more anger, and you're never really sure whose fault it really is. Now, as much as anger management classes and counseling are helpful in dealing with some of these inappropriate ways of handling anger, conflict is multifaceted and pops up in many different circumstances with many different outcomes. Something I don't hear talked about as much in relation to co collaboration, conflict, and anger is faking peace. Faking peace is when you have a conflict with two, at least two people, but one or more involved pretends that nothing is wrong in the face of confrontation. Think about the last conflict you had with a peer that was left unresolved, and later you felt that relationship was broken, but you still had to see that person from time to time, at work or at school. It's hard to look that person in the eyes. It's hard to talk without feeling awkward, even though when you talk, it might be civil and polite, in some cases, you might be walking down the hallway, see that person coming from the other way, and turn around and walk the other way. Or you might hide by the water cooler or the locker just to avoid further awkwardness. That's faking peace. You can feel that something has deeply fractured the relationship, but you might not know why, and you can't pinpoint one specific reason. There's no clear way to fix the relationship either. In the workplace, it might look like this. A team manager proposes a project. Everyone gives positive feedback. The project absolutely flops. The company loses tons of money, and the team manager might lose his job. What happened? The people on his team feared him, or they believed, based on prior history, he wouldn't listen to what they had to say, so they went along with his wishes. They decided that the cost of trying to convince him that his idea was flawed was not worth a, work, a strained work relationship. Who knows how he would have reacted? And if he lost his job due to a failed plan, that I might actually give them the chance of a better team manager. At a school, it might look like this. A group of hardworking teachers have their contracts up for renewal. They don't make demands, they don't complain, they simply decide not to renew and move on to a different school. There's something wrong here. There's something underneath that shows they've been faking peace. 
See, teachers are invested in schools. And so if a large group is silently and suddenly leaving, someone in leadership has made it hard for them to be teachers at that school. On the outside, making peace looks like a great way to deal with conflict. Everyone is acting professionally, no one's feelings are hurt, and the person who doesn't agree doesn't have to go through the messy process of conflict. Um, there are no personal risks, and everything is kept at status quo. Making peace is often employed by the subordinate in a power relationship. These these people in leadership have caused those they lead to employ faking peace as a mechanism of survival. Um, and unfortunately, these students, children, and employees take this with them into other relationships, which is where you'll find it with peers. I often found myself as a child faking peace. In one relationship with one of my parents, I felt I couldn't be vulnerable. And so I pretended everything was fine, uh, even when asked. The cost of conflict caused greater harm to me than actually dealing with it. Parents who allow for fake peace in childhood end up with adult children who want to have a large emotional distance from their parents, but their parents don't know why. Bosses who allow for fake peace in the workplace end up with employees who quit, projects that fail, and there's no clear reason. And the problem with faking peace is that people who are skilled in this mechanism easily come up with plausible reasons for why there's nothing wrong in the relationship in the first place. For example, why are you leaving this company? I just got a better opportunity. Or I wanted to go get my master's. But it's not just those in the power side of the relationship who miss out when fake peace is employed. It's also those who are employing this mechanism who miss out on genuine collaboration and vulnerable relationships. They're unintentionally wasting company resources. They're giving a verdict before the, the crossroads. They're saying to those in authority, you can't change. You have hurt me and you will always hurt me and you never say sorry. But whether you're a manager, a teacher, or a parent, it's actually those on the power side of the relationship to open up the flow of communication to destroy fake peace. We have to make a safe space for those on the vulnerable side of the power relationship to express their concerns and their fears without fear of reprimand. And just as much as the beautiful side of collaboration is a skill to be learned, so is properly dealing with the ugly side. So, heads of schools and companies, principals and managers, when is the last time you asked those you lead, how am I doing as a leader? When I was a managing editor of Beijing Kids Magazine, I asked those on my team every month how I was doing as a leader. I received candid answers that helped me fine tune my leadership and it strengthened my relationship with those on my team. But I didn't just ask when everything was peaceful. I also asked after a conflict. I did this because I had forgotten how it felt to be led. I couldn't see if my actions would want to cause someone to employ fake peace. I asked things like, how could I have communicated better to avoid this conflict? Did I respect you? Is there anything I could have done better? Parents, when is the last time you sat your child down and asked, how do you know I love you? When is the last time I hurt you? And do you feel I reconciled that? How could I do better as a parent? Maybe you can't ask a two-year-old for their opinions about parenting, but certainly a preteen and teenager has been around enough of other parents to know if you're a good parent or a bad parent. If you're preparing them for the world outside of your home or if you're keeping them in an unexplained bubble. My husband and I even asked this of our five and six-year-old. 
And if you believe that a peer has been employing fake peace with you, simply start the conversation with, I feel like there might not be something right between us. I hope you'll give me the opportunity to reconcile with you if I've hurt you. It might be a little scary to think about how your employee, student, or friend will respond to you, but I know that the cost of fake peace is greater than the awkwardness of a momentary conflict. Thank you.